Hello everyone, welcome to SMP Media Center, your hub for all media productions in Jacobs University. I'm Faisal Kader and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna take you over basic camera setup. The visual component is very often the most important part of a, a media production. So today, I, uh, in this tutorial, you will learn how to get the best results using uh, whatever equipment you have. Starting off, it is very important for me to make you guys understand that the most important part of a visual production is you. This is beautifully summarized in this quote by Ansel Adams, one of the greatest photographers of all time, which says, the single mo most important component of a camera is the 12 inches behind it. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about one of the most crucial uh, aspects of uh, any media production and that is to know your tools well and when it comes to photography and filmmaking one of the best tools you might need for your production might be the one that you're using to watch your watch this video right now that is your phone phone technology and phone cameras have come such a long way that it is very easy to get great um, results from any normal smartphone out there in the market. A slight upgrade from that are point shoot, point and shoot cameras and point and shoot cameras as the name suggests are quite simple to use. You just point the camera at your subject or the environment you're taking a photo or video of and you just click and, and it's done. You don't have to think about a lot of other things that we will uh, discuss later on. Uh, one of the examples of a point and shoot is this camera. It's uh, it might look big and bulky, like uh, similar to a DSLR, but this is um, well, it really falls in between a DSLR and a point and shoot. But um, uh, the one of the most important factors is that that it doesn't have interchangeable lenses, so the lens is fixed to the camera. It's very convenient to use, and um, you can just turn it on, take off the lens cap get your shot and you're good. Moving on from that, one of the cameras that you will come across a lot in uh, in this field uh, is our DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. These are basically the cameras that give you the most amount of freedom in terms of what you can do and change while taking a picture um, to the point that you can also change the lenses to uh, use lenses with different focal lengths. Um, in layman's term, how much you can zoom in and out. Um, there are other things, other factors too, but this, that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Now that we know our tools, let's talk about the factors that you might want to keep in mind while uh, taking a photo or making videos. Um, this can be summed up uh, in this slide, uh, which is called the three pillars of exposure, uh, which are ISO, shutter speed and aperture. All these things combined determine how bright or dark your photos are and in individually too uh, they can affect your photos in different ways that we can we will delve into now uh, starting off with aperture aperture is basically the opening in your lens it's a small it's a hole in your lens through which light comes through and um, registers on the sensor um, and you can determine the size of its opening. So if you use a small aperture, the opening in your in the in your lens will be big. And if you use a bigger aperture, the opening in your lens will be small. So it moves inversely. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's the way it is. The way in which different aperture affect your image is uh, changing the depth of field, which basically means how much of your photo will be in focus. Uh, taking this as an example, um, in this photo, uh, during a Fridays Race for Future protest, I uh, was taking a picture of this uh, child who was giving a speech in front of thousands of people and um, I wanted to keep the, the, the boy in focus and having everything else um, out of focus so that more um, attention is diverted towards the child because that's my uh, main subject. So I used a, a small bigger aperture uh, around 3.5, 5.4.5 because of which I could get this result where um, you can see 
my subject is sharp but the background is blurred out so um, more attention goes towards the subject moving on from there we have shutter speed shutter speed is how long the shutter camera shutter remains open to let light in so higher shutter speed means that your shutter opens and closes at um very fast so like just that that was a shutter speed of one one thousand but if you um have a higher sh lower shutter speed let's say we move down to um two seconds so the shutter remains open for two seconds letting all the light in uh for that duration of time so what it basically does is that when you have uh, your shutter open for a longer time you have more light coming in which makes the image brighter when you have the shutter open for a shorter amount of time it lets less light to come in making the image darker how shutter speed affects the image is uh, when it comes to moving subjects so the higher the sh uh, when the shutter speed is high it means that any moving subject in the frame will be sharp because it only opens for a short amount of time but um but then when you go towards lower shutter speeds it means it means that your moving subjects will uh show a lot of motion blur which can be used artistically uh for, for example in these pictures where i'm using a shutter speed of like 1 by 20 1 20th of a second or even 1 second 1 second exposure where um my sub i can show the movement of a subject in my photo and in the uh, top photo it's also pretty interesting how um the one subject that was not moving is sharp but uh, while the sh subject that's moving is fast and it's it's showing motion blur so it is another way of um isolating your subjects and driving attention towards your subject um here my subjects were uh the the people in the photo so i since the since the train is in motion blur you can see the subjects much better however a word of caution is that when you're shooting handheld your shutter speed shouldn't go below one hundredth of a second because that in that case you introduce a lot of um shake from your uh, shaking from your body which uh, makes your uh, images go less sharp which is not a good thing now we're down to talking about iso what iso means is how sensitive your camera sensor is to light um so, so what how it plays out in uh, in photography is that if you have a higher iso you will have more light uh, being recorded and if you have lower iso you will have less light being recorded so higher iso brighter pictures lower iso darker pictures it the way that iso affects your photos is that when you go into the territory of higher isos you will uh, encounter a lot of noise noise what noise basically is that your pixels are being burnt while um while taking the pictures so that it you can you can see in the zoomed out uh, scenario where um the picture doesn't look sharp enough um what you would use a higher iso in the in situations in which you might want to use higher iso is when you're shooting action in a dark environment for taking the example of this scenario where i'm trying to shoot a person dancing inside a dark studio so i had to use higher shutter speed to make it the person sharp and I had to bump up my ISO so that everything was well lit um, but it also introduced a bit of noise sometimes it's doable but try to avoid that so moving on to videos um, whatever we have talked about so far will remain the same how ISO affect your photos how aperture affect your videos will be the same even with shutter speed um, so uh, let's say we are using a lower shutter speed that means you will see more motion blur in movements which, and how that translates into the final result is that your motion looks more natural because apparently our uh, shutter speed is low so that we see more motion blur in movements however if you shoot at a higher shutter speed then everything will be sharp so like 
it 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 looks choppy and that's basically one of the only things that you need to keep in mind while uh, shooting videos well you can determine or, and control all these factors in your photos and videos by shooting in manual mode in your camera however if you have that option however um if you still feel confused about these things or you're just beginning uh or you're just starting off with it you can always fall back to auto mode it will in most cases give you the best results it's just that um auto mode takes away your freedom um in what type of photos you can make for example if you want something like this you cannot really do that with auto mode very easily so um so as i mentioned earlier the uh, way to get better in photography and filmmaking is to is by uh, doing more and more of it so that is where smb media center can help you out by renting out equipment to you uh, for your personal or uh, class related media projects. You can rent out equipments by clicking on the link in the description or link in bio in terms of inst uh, in case of Instagram. Also, this was a basic camera, um, cam basic camera setup tutorial and there are so many more things that uh, that goes into making photos and videos that, that that are beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, we would love to uh, discuss these things or teach you these things uh, whenever you want. Just feel free to scan this code or, um, or click on the link to set up an appointment with one of us so that we can sit down with you and uh, take you through the nitty gritty of making photos and videos so that you can get the best results out of your uh, media productions.